Hey yo, football fans, it's another great year. Fantasy football fiends, grab your beer. Giving you the best draft tips for your picks. Starts and sits to the wave of wide fix. For my grabs galore, the stats that's hardcore. Triple F does it all, have y'all screaming more. So sit back, relax, let the experts prevail. JT Mag, them sicky guns never fail. What's up, fantasy football fans? My name is JT Magnum here along with Siggy Guns. Welcome back to Fantasy Football Fiends Top 30 Ranking Show. We're doing the top 30 running backs today. And this was probably one of the hardest ones I had to do because it's hard to rank these running backs, you know, to predict some of these guys. And there's other guys that might possibly get hurt and other people will play. And some people are hurt and not starting. Some people might come back later in the year. So it was really hard to do these rankings. So... We're going to give it a whirl, all right? So, uh, Siggy, who's your 30 through 26? I have CJ Spiller, Amir Abdul, uh, whatever. <laughs> Rashad Jennings, Bishop Sankey, and Todd Gurley. I'm going to talk about Rashad Jennings. Mystery right now, I guess, is the word. A lot of people had him ranked pretty high in the beginning before preseason. Then all of a sudden, nobody knows what's going on with him. Then it looks like... I, I really don't even know. I mean, I, I read about him and all this stuff, and I still don't know. So I don't know if they're just keeping it under the vest, you know, in regards to what his role is or what he's going to do, if he's even playing. I don't even know. So I don't want to take that risk. This is somebody that had some upside before preseason, and obviously he did good whenever he was playing with him last year. So I, I couldn't imagine that they would just say, hey, you're not going to play or anything like that. So I... I that's why I have him so low. If anybody wants to know why, he's just—I don't trust him. <laughs> yeah. Plus, with Andre Williams on that team, he's going to get a lot of more, a lot more opportunities as well. And and I don't and know. And Green, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't heard anything really about Rashad Jennings either. Like I haven't heard one thing. You're right. I mean, it's been—you you almost have to like dig deep, try to find something. But um, my 30 through 26 are Alfred Blue, uh, Giovanni Bernard. Rashad Jennings also, uh, uh, Jonathan Stewart, and Duke Johnson. I had Duke Johnson drop it because of his hamstring problems. And I don't know how when he's going to actually start to play, you know, but I think Duke Johnson is one of my surprise players this year, um, especially if he gets healthy. But right now I'll talk about Giovanni Bernard. Here's a guy that everybody was high on everybody's fantasy football list last year, and everybody was saying, you know, I basically called him a bust. And I was like, he's not gonna, he's not going to break out. And sure enough, he didn't. And who broke out? Jeremy Hill. So he's a guy that's basically got a lot of talent, got a lot of speed, got a lot of, you know, he can do, you know, a lot in the football field if he gets the opportunity. But now he's not going to get that opportunity with Jeremy Hill running the ball the most on the team, getting most of the carries. So that's why I still, he's still a guy that can still get you 600 yards and, you know, maybe 700 like he did last year and a few touchdowns. So that's why I even have him on the list. But um, he's not a guy that's going to break out and get you like 1,500 yards like everybody was thinking and getting all these all-purpose receiving and running yards like everybody thought he was going to do last year. Who's your 25 through 21? TJ Yeldon, Jonathan Stewart, Doug Martin, Alfred Blue, and Melvin Gordon. I'm going to talk about Alfred Blue. I have him pretty high up there. I just think, you know, I talked about Aaron Foster. And, you know, they say eight weeks. I really don't think he's going to come back at all. Um and even if he does, I don't see him coming back to where he's going to be a factor. So Alfred Blue, whenever he did take over last year for a few games, this is somebody that can actually run really well. He's not somebody that I did notice, especially in preseason. He really can't punch it in when it matters. Like if it's, you know, first and goal, he doesn't have that. You, but they are giving him the ball at least in that situation. But he doesn't look like he has that punch. So... Be weary of him. I know, you know, right away you start thinking, okay, well, if he did this last year, or if Arian Foster had this kind of season last year, then Alfred Blue should easily have this too, right? I would just be be careful with that kind of thinking because, you know, there's, there's a reason why Arian Foster is the guy and, you know, Alfred Blue isn't. So you know, I wouldn't necessarily try to put him right there. Yeah, especially on the goal line. Arian Foster just has that knack for finding the goal line. Like he, yes. he finds the right holes. He knows how to score. And you're right, Alfred Blue does, is not the same running back as Arian Foster in that regard. He just can't, it doesn't seem like he can score. But, uh, yeah, my, he gets stuck. Yeah. My 25 through 21 is, uh, Amir Abdullah, TJ Yeldon, Lamar Miller, Justin Forsett, 
and uh, Alfred Morris. And I'll talk about Amir Abdullah. Everybody's praising him as the second coming of Barry Sanders. And I said the last show, we were talking a little bit about him, but but uh, he's a very shifty back, and I think he's gonna. I think he's eventually gonna take over and get basically more yards than Joyke Bell because they they gotta play this guy. He's just too explosive not to play. He's gonna. They're gonna use him in the screen game. They're gonna use him in passing downs. Like the the guy is just too talented to to just leave off the field. And I think eventually he's gonna take over for Joyke Bell this year, and he's gonna have more yards rushing and he's gonna have more touchdowns because he's just too many explosive plays waiting to happen from this guy. But I have him low. Only because only because Joyke Bell obviously is going to end up being the starter, and they also have Theo Riddick on that team who who plays a lot of running back. So that's the only reason I have him lower on this on this ranking list. But he has potential to go even higher if he if he uh, ends up being the starter or ends up taking over for Joyke Bell and Theo Riddick. That's why I have him so low right now because there's too many people ahead of him. Yeah. So who's your uh, twenty through uh, sixteen? I have Joseph Randall, Chris Ivory, Terry's Murray, Andre Ellington, and Alfred Morris. Now I'm going to talk about Randall. The Cowboys running back situation obviously doesn't look like it's uh, any clearer after this last preseason game. Yeah. It does look like Randall will be the starter. It looks like they were saving him to be the guy. He thinks he regards himself as an everyday, uh, every down back. Obviously, Jim McFadden is still there also, though. So I don't see that happening, especially since they actually gave some money to McFadden. So it's a situation where on paper with that line, you would think, okay, well, if Murray can rush or, you know, for 1,800 yards, even if they have to split, you're looking at maybe 900 to 1,000 for each of them, et cetera. That's wishful thinking at this point. But if I had to trust somebody more, I'd probably trust Randall Moore to be the guy that takes over eventually and maybe McFadden, you know, he's always prone to injury. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, my uh, my um, twenty through sixteen is uh, Andre Ellington, Tevin Coleman, Todd Gurley, Arian Foster, and Latavius Murray. And I'm gonna talk about Foster since we were just talking about him a second ago. Anyway, I don't know where you have him so high <laughs> because I think he's gonna come back. I still think he's gonna come back. And when that guy comes back, he always produces. He might be injury prone, but when he does, he just somehow always manages to produce. And to me, that's low for him at 17. So, uh, you know. That's, that's high for somebody that's going to only play yeah, in I know. four fantasy games. But, uh, no, no, he, he ain't going to miss that that many weeks. You mean he's going to. He, he, he's he, out for eight weeks. He's yeah, out eight, for eight. eight and there's eight only, what, from, 12, 14? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He's out for eight weeks of the season or out for eight weeks starting from when he got hurt? Out for eight games of the season. So that's nine if oh, you count wow. the bye week. Oh, I didn't know the eight games. Well, I'm leaving him there because he can still produce. Like I said, <laughs> he's the type of guy that, so gets, you, like I said, he scores I'm just touchdowns. Thinking about that though, you have play the playoff start at 12 weeks, so he's four, three games. Playoff start you're 12 having weeks, him rank 14 that high. weeks usually. Yeah, 14 weeks. Playoff, playoff starts at 12. But, you know, Holy two. crap! <laughs> yeah, well, the season ends at 14, 15. Yeah, season ends right? usually. Yeah, usually, usually week sixteen is when the season ends. Some people go through week seventeen. I don't know why they well, do that, but yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I just think you know, for five games or whatever it's going to be, I don't, he's not going to play eight games if that's what you. I don't know, think he's going to miss eight games. I have to, I have to, I have to look at that. But I don't think he's going to miss eight games. I don't think that's how many games he was supposed to miss because he was supposed to miss like just a few weeks of the season with that torn groin. We'll see. We'll see, but I'm know. I'm, I'm leaving him right now at 17. I still think he's a touchdown machine. That guy is just ridiculous when it comes to goal line carries, and 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 on top of that, catches on the goal line. He gets receiving touchdowns too. So we'll see. Bold Who, prediction. Yeah. Who's your 15 right. through 11? All right, so I have 15. It's like Carlos Hyde, Frank uh, Gore, Lamar Miller, Mark Ingram, and Justin Forsett. I'm going to talk about Mark Ingram. When he plays, that's a big if sometimes, though, too. So far, it looks like he's healthy. But when he plays in that offense, especially now that it looks like Drew Brees might not be have the weapons to throw 50 passes a game, Ingram can rush, he can catch, he can do a lot of things, and he can be a fantasy star. And I, I just think this is somebody that you really got to pay attention to when you when people picked him last year, which he was you know pretty ranked pretty low, 
when he was playing, he was producing. So I just think this could be the season where he finally puts it all together. I like Mark Ingram a lot. My uh, 15 through 11 is uh, Matt Forte, Darren McFadden over Joseph Randall, uh, Carlos Hyde, LaShawn McCoy at 12, and I dropped him, and uh, there's a big reason for that. 11, Mark, I have Mark Ingram as well. And I'll talk about Carlos Hyde. I am a Niners fan. I don't usually talk too much about my Niners, but I like Carlos Hyde. I like, I like the fact that this, this offensive line, being that it sucks at pass blocking, is amazing at run blocking. And the only thing I really like this year about Carlos Hyde is that it's unlike when Frank Gore was there, is that you're not going to see too many eight man fronts against San Francisco this year. Cause there's two, they finally have some speed on the outside at wide receiver in Torrey Smith and Bruce Ellington and some players like that to be able to counter being it. Cause if you stock that box against, against the 49ers to stop Carlos Hyde, they're going to throw it right over the top and they're going to throw it over the top quickly. They might not complete it, but they're going to throw it over the top. And so you're, you can't take the <laughs> chance. You can't take the chance of getting burnt deep by, by Torrey Smith or Bruce Ellington or players like that when, you know, when, uh, you know, so I'm, a, I think that you're going to see, they're going to see a lot more different, you know, seven man fronts, a lot of different, different looks against the run finally. And Carlos Hyde's going to benefit. That guy can hit the hole fast and he's strong. He's hard to bring down. So, and he's looked good this preseason so far in his limited action, but he's looked good. Yeah. Who's your, uh, 10 right. through 10, 10 through, through six? six. All right, Jeremy Hill, LaShawn McCoy, Matt Forte, C.J. Anderson, and DeMarco Murray. I'm going to talk about Jeremy Hill. I have him at 10, which is pretty low for a lot of people's rankings. Um, the reason why is not only because Giovanni Bernard is still there, and I think he's going to be you know, somebody that comes in every now and then. I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be a 60-40 uh, split, but it's going to be right around there, I would imagine. But I just think because Andy Dalton has more to prove this season – because of his contract, because of all the people talking, because, you know, this is, it seems like this is the year where if he doesn't do good, he might be gone. And I just have a feeling that with AJ Green healthy and with, uh, um, what's his name coming back, also the other receiver that was hurt last year, I, I think they're going to be throwing a lot more this year. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. I just think they're going to be throwing the ball. And normally when that happens, when you have a team start throwing more, the running backs kind of get forgotten. Now, don't get me wrong, Jeremy Hill's still going to have good. A very good season. I would put him at, let's say, the high ceiling would be what um, Le'Veon Bell did last year to where he did, you know, just what he was showing the last few games of the season. But I just think that Andy Dalton has more to prove this year, and I think that's going to eat away at his potential. Yeah, my uh, my 10 through 6, there's going to be some shocking names in here, but uh, C.J. Anderson, uh, Melvin Gordon. I know that's a probably shocking name because he's a rookie, but I think he's going to run wild in San Diego, especially with the way Philip Rivers can throw. Uh, Frank Gore at number eight and, uh, seven, DeMarco Murray. I think he's going to be a little bit different now. He ain't going to be running the ball and touching it every second. And six, I have Jamal Charles, which a lot of people have high in their rankings as well. But I'll talk about Frank Gore. Um, now he's, <laughs> He's got the opposite as well as Carlos Hyde this year. As he finally is going to play against a team every week where they cannot stack the box against him. He has seen the most eight and nine man fronts I've ever seen in my entire life, you know, you know, running the ball. And this is going to be the first time he's ever going to look out. He, he knows he has Andrew Luck back there and he's got three, four, five wide receivers deep at, you know, that they can play and he can basically just run wild. He knows how to hit the holes, even if it's the littlest hole. And he might not be the fastest guy in the field, and he might not break long runs for touchdowns, but he will break long runs, you know, long runs in general. And he might, you know, he's obviously going to be a goal line threat for them that they needed. They haven't had that goal line threat of a guy to be able to hit little holes and hit creases and score. So I think his production, he might have, he won't have a career year, but he's going to have one of the best years of his career, even at age 32, just because of that reason alone. Where he's not going to see, he's not going to see the defenses he's had, he's seen in the past, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield too. A lot of people forgot about that because the 49ers never used them for that yeah. anymore. Under that, under the Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman era, they just they just forgot about throwing the ball to Frank Gore. So he made a catch last year for a touchdown, like a yeah, 51-yard I... touchdown. 
He's definitely going to be uh, somebody that's you're going to want him on your team, especially since a lot of people are picking him pretty low. I mean, I, I'm actually shocked. We have him up, you know, I have him at, I think, 14. I've seen him go 20th running back so far. So Because people are forgetting about him. They think just just because he's old. They yeah, they, they think they either forget that he's on the Colts or they forgot that he's, you know, they maybe they think he's still in the Niners or who knows what they're thinking, but – you're crazy if you pick him way that low over some of these guys that are in here because he's gonna he's going he is a very underrated back and he's very durable. He doesn't get hurt. And he plays hurt. Yep. I agree. All right. You're uh five through one. Five through one. I have Marshawn Lynch, Eddie Lacey, Adrian Peterson, Le'Veon Bell, and Jamal Charles. And I have I'll talk about Bell. I've met two, which is pretty hard for somebody who's gonna miss two games. But I just have a feeling that he obviously he had a great year last year. I, don't, I mean, he had one of the better seasons that I would have thought, especially out of the backfield. And now you add the fact that everybody's going to be paying more attention to Antonio Brown and those receivers. I think he's going to run wild this year, even more so than what he did with his catching. And he caught 854 yards last year, 83 receptions. This is a guy that actually has a chance, which which is funny because of his size, to do what LaShawn McCoy and – and all these other players that you would think more of that shifty, you know, style would would be you would do, and he's doing it. So I think, wow, I, I just, the ceiling is very high for him. I think he's going to have an incredible season: sixteen hundred rushing yards, twelve touchdowns running, hundred receptions, thousand receiving, five in the air. <laughs> that kind of season is what I think he can have. But too bad he's missing two games. Yeah, he is. He is missing a couple games. But I have him in my top five as well. I have uh, Marshawn Lynch. I have Eddie Lacy, Le'Veon Bell, Jeremy Hill at number two, and Adrian Peterson. And I'm going to talk about Jeremy Hill as well because he is my breakout stud this year. It has in like, he, I think he's going to have a better year than he had last year. I think this guy has potential to lead the league in rushing. I think he can score a lot of touchdowns. I think he's going to pretty single-handedly take away Giovanni Bernard's carries. Because they're not going to want to take him off the field because this guy is going to produce so well. I really like his. It's just those. What is it with these running backs, these LSU running backs that just <laughs> that they're just good, you know? And I and I I don't know what it is with them, but yeah. like he is just one of those. He's just a phenomenal running back, and and the way that you know with with those receivers that they have on also on the outside, it's hard. You can't stack the box against Cincinnati, and they run and they will run a lot more, especially with. Dalton being a little questionable in the passing game. So I really like Jeremy Hill a lot this year. I have, I would have ranked him number one, but I just, because of, because of the fact that Adrian Peterson has going to get way more carries than, um, than him, I think, I think that's why I have him ranked, uh, ranked at number two. All right. That does it. How do you have Jamal Charles so low? I don't – because of Niles Davis, too. He's another one. He shares carries with Niles Davis. They use him a lot, and I think they're trying to preserve Jamal Charles. He gets he gets a lot of receptions, too, but I think that when he's on the field, they're, they're all over him. They're not all over the receivers. They're all over him. And Alex Smith doesn't hit receivers. He but hits Macklin's running backs. there. That doesn't mean anything. I, they I did think okay Macklin's going to make it to where it's going to be even better. Nah, but Alex Smith, when it comes time to the regular season, it just they don't – I don't know what it is with that dude. He won't throw the wide receivers. Oh, and you just hate Alex Smith. <laughs> no, I, I don't hate him. I, I don't really hate him. I just don't, you know, I don't trust him, especially with that. He just, he just doesn't, he's not good. For, he's not a good fantasy quarterback for wide receivers. Maybe he'll, he, maybe he worked on it this Gosh, year because he's probably pissed about it because people are talking about it. Who knows? I mean, he's got to know that people are talking about him, <laughs> but. But I don't, I don't, I just don't trust him. And in that game, they're going to be keying on Jamal Charles when he comes in again. That's why his numbers have been dropping a little bit. Not to mention he had some injuries too, but that's why his numbers have been dropping because people are keying on him. They're not worried about the wide receivers on that team. So I don't know. We'll yeah. see. But uh, that does it for this one. Make sure you uh, follow us on Twitter at JT underscore Magnum 816 and at Siggy V. Make sure you check out MagnumSportsNetwork.com. That's our website. It's up and running. And stay tuned for the next one. We're going to do the wide receiver rankings. And also, at the bottom, the ticker that will change during the regular season. You'll have all our, we'll have all our uh, weekly rankings on there going, scrolling down there. Also, every Tuesday will be the Stardom sit show where we do the Stardom sit We do the waiver wire pickups. We do the sleepers. And, and basically, that's it. But 
we're doing it early. We're doing it on Tuesday. So if there's any changes during the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, up until games on Sunday, just make sure you go to magnumsportsnetwork.com. Check out the uh, the rankings updates and things like that. That way we can get our start and show out of the way early for you guys so you guys can you know make the changes you need and then go to our website later if you want to do that. We are doing a live show. Not sure when we're going to do the live show, but we're going to have a live show every week. And it might be on a Saturday, might be on a Friday, depends. Um, I definitely don't know which one of the two are going to be, but we're going to probably do that so that way you can, you guys can have a chance to ask us who you think we like for lineups and it gives, gives you a chance to interact with us. All right. So for JT Magnum and Siggy Guns, we are out. Peace.